To Battleground Ontario now, where for the second time in as many weeks, progressive conservative leader Tim Hudek appears to be backing away from another policy of his. It's also known in the trade as <clears throat> flip-flopping. At a press conference at Queen's Park this morning, Hudak was asked point blank if he was standing by his policy, announced in December 2012, of selling the provincially owned liquor and beer stores and letting Ontarians buy beer in corner stores, just like they can do in many other provinces. Remember, he's asked point blank, are you standing by that policy? Here's his response. Look, I, I, I've got lots more to say about uh, where we want to go in the province in the time ahead. I, I've got a particular focus right now because my uh, bill is coming for debate on Thursday. All right, now, that might sound like he's backing away. Not really sure there was an answer to a pretty clear question there. So we followed up with his office, and here's the statement that we got from his office. This is the entire thing, quote, We believe that in jurisdictions around the world, the sale and distribution of beverage alcohol is managed responsibly through government regulation rather than owning and running alcohol-related outlets. The province should examine all options to increase competition and choice. Again, that's the statement we got. Okay, well, that would involve possibly sale, possible sale. I'm not sure what. Anyway, we've asked Sun News contributor John Robson to help us with this one. And John, we probably wouldn't be making such a big deal out of this if last week he hadn't thrown his right to work legislation overboard. Everyone thought he was going to come through with that and that's not going to be in the platform. And now we're kind of wondering if cor beer and corner stores is and I'd say his answers are ambiguous at best. Yeah, as one of Zane Gray's characters once said, once a man starts running, he never comes to a natural stopping place. <laughs> right. And Tim Hudak has certainly created the impression that uh, if he does have any convictions, he avoids letting them interfere with the flow of his rhetoric. And the result of this is that he simply he gives the impression of weakness. I, I mean, you, 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 know, you call it a flip-flop. A flip-flop is where you take one position and then you flip-flop sure, I'm another in favor one. of government yeah, regula he, or government he, owning beer stores, sure. He never had the, the snap, neither on the pro side or the con side. I mean, this, his policy was we should look at all options. And his spokesperson says his policy is still we should look at all options. For goodness sakes, he's been an MPP since 1995. It's almost 20 years. He's had time to look at the options. He could look at one option every three years and he'd have gotten through six by now. <laughs> Has he found one he likes? Well, he, on his website, to be fair, and it's an old post on his website, it says he's in favor of letting us buy beer in corner stores and letting other people sell wine in grocery stores or something like that. And, 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 but then he, it's, it's not sure partial sale of the LCBO, full sale, the LCBO still owned but competes by yeah. somebody else, I'd like what, to know. What he put up is actually buzzwords. He mm -hmm. says that they should treat us as responsible people capable of making choices. Get the government out of a business it shouldn't be in, and then it's time for some tough choices on getting out of business. Queen's Park has no business being in. Okay, it's time for tough choices. Give us one. Are you going to privatize it? What's, are you going to get rid of it? Right. Are you going to license corner stores? Here are your tough choices. Presumably, it's, if you privatize, you get a of them, hell of a dividend if, as the taxpayer. I mean, it would go but, for but don't a, presume. Yeah. He's the leader of the opposition. He wants to be premier. He should say. Why should we have to presume for him? Why is he so vague all the time? The man is a blancmange. This wobbly kind of jelly-like desserts is vaguely sweet, but doesn't really have much character to it. And the result of this is that you can't trust him to do anything. Margaret Thatcher once said of one of her opponents, who was a hard leftist mm -hmm. who'd suddenly given up all that silly socialism to cur curry votes of the middle class, and she said, you know, if that's how quickly he gives up things he does believe in, imagine how quickly he will give up things he does not believe in. And here you have Tim Hudak, who seemed to have a few beliefs. You sometimes get the feeling there's a right-winger somewhere inside him struggling to get out. He won't succeed, but once in a while, you know, you, you see something happened, unlike, mm -hmm. say, John Tory. But then he puts together a platform consisting of things he doesn't believe in, because he doesn't dare to stand up for the stuff that he apparently does. Why should anyone believe a word of it? Well, and what he said about the right to work, he said, for every person he hears who likes this, here's a hundred people saying this, like, get hydro rates under control, blah, 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 mm -hmm. so the choice is clear. Why is the choice clear? You could do Why both. couldn't you do both? Sure. Exactly. What he says is so smooth and soothing and polished and talking pointed, but there has no intellectual content because it has no moral content. He hasn't got the backbone. And then he wonders why he doesn't win elections. Uh, this particular one, well, certainly the right to work one, but this particular one, unions will presumably not like this. So now we have two proposals that unions may give a lot of feed brushback, certainly on the right to work they, they were. And so you now start to wonder, is it because he just doesn't want to go mano a mano with, yes, these unions have a lot of money. They're going to try and take him down. There's no question about it. Um, you know, is that in the back of his head? Yeah, I mean, again, making enemies of your friends is no... Uh 
There's you not don't do it in politics. Do you think you make usually. friends of your enemies? Yeah. So you think the unions aren't going to fight them again? The call these working the families yeah. coalition won't right. mysteriously try and, and smash him down as a hard right mm -hmm. maniac, portray him as, again, I mentioned Margaret Thatcher. Tim Hudak doesn't often remind me of Margaret Thatcher, but he reminds them of Margaret Thatcher every mm -hmm. other day. They will fight him just as fiercely, more so, because they smell blood. So he has gained nothing especially because he has a reputation for weakness. When you have a reputation for weakness, you must show strength. If you have a reputation for rigidity, it's okay to show a little flexibility. It can almost make you seem human at times. But this is a catastrophe. But Leaving us with what? He's going to control hydro rates. What's he going to do? Give a central planning of power? We, we can't uh, examine uh, Hudak in, in, uh, in isolation. There's other two other leaders he's going to be compared against, Andrea Horvath and Kathleen Wynne. Would your assessment of their rigidity, strength, weakness, be similar. I mean, we really haven't seen much Mandy Horvath yet, except that she's well, invisible. Very, invisible Absolutely very tough invisible. And, yeah. People, no one has any idea what she even looks like. It's mm -hmm. amazing. How can this be? At least we knew what Howard Hampton looked like. And, and then you've got Kathleen Wynne, who obviously is this sort of facilitator drift. I was just at the cabinet table. I know nothing. I mean, she's not particularly a tower of strength. But Tim Hudak could contrive to reelect her. He could actually do it. Wow. And for what? Who knows? We're so, going to see this spring. John Robson, thank you so much. Thank you.